Hello everyone. Hello, good evening. Welcome to Air America. My name is Fifi. I'm one of the e-guide here. I'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions regarding Air America. So here in Air America, uh, Air America is American Cultural Center here in Jakarta. We're under the U.S. Embassy. So uh, we are here since 2010, and this year we're going to celebrate our 8th anniversary. Please give a round of applause for Air America. So we have another uh, Education USA uh, event. So for those of you who are interested to know more about uh, stud uh, medical studies in the U.S., please come and join the event, How to Become a U.S. Certified Medical Specialist. Uh, the event will be held on Tuesday, November 27, at 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And these are the highlights of our event. So I would like to... Uh, invite you guys to become our member. Just simply visit our website at www.adamerica.or.id uh, and then click register, uh, fill your name and then your email. You're simply registered as our member. You're, you'll get our free update uh, as a newsletter through your email about our upcoming event. And these are our social media. We're very active in our social media. Don't forget to follow us, mention us at Ad America, and use the hashtag, hashtag Ad America. Uh, especially for those of you who likes to tweet, please do so. Don't forget to mention us, and then your tweet will be pop up at our live tweet wall. Okay, without further ado, I would like to invite our lovely advisor, Fina Alatas. Thank you, Vivi. Hello, apa kabar? Thank you all for coming out tonight. It's a cute little audience here, um, but it means that bisa ngobrol-ngobrol lebih uh, intim lagi, mungkin, ya. Yeah. Um, so before we begin, sorry, we, before we begin, I'd like to um, talk a little bit about Education USA. Ada yang baru pertama kali kesini? Enggak ya? So maybe I can skip this, Aravina. Just in case, ada yang nonton di rumah, so I'm just gonna say hi to everyone who's watching us um, streaming online. Um, hello, uh, thank you for watching us uh, apa, online. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what Education USA is, just in case uh, this is your first time here. Jadi Education USA ini um, bagian dari US State Department. Kita ada lebih dari 400 International Student Advising Center di lebih dari 170 negara, right? Jadi kita ngapain sih sebenarnya di sini Education USA ini ada advisor yang basically kita akan mengguide siapapun yang mau study ke US. Dan ini semua servisnya gratis, jadi tidak berbayar, right? I know it sounds too good to be true, but um, that is the fact, right? So we're basically here for you guys. We're helping you every step of the way, all right? So kita di Indonesia, of course, nggak hanya ada di Ad America doang. Jadi kita ada 8 center dengan 10 advisors, right? Kita ada di uh, ada dua di Jakarta, ada dua di Surabaya, satu di Medan, Malang. Uh, Makassar dan Banda Aceh. So if you have any family members or friends who lives in one of the cities, you can tell them to check out to check one of our centers, right? Jadi mereka nggak harus selalu uh, pergi ke center yang ada di Jakarta. Tapi memang kalau di Jakarta ini, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about our centers in Jakarta. Kita ada dua di sini dan di US Embassy. Um, bedanya kalau di basic kita ada dua advisors juga di US Embassy. Feel free to uh, meet with our advisors there, David dan Iqbal. Hanya aja kalau kalian mau masuk ke Embassy, you have to make an appointment 24 hour before to gain the access to get into the US Embassy compound, right? Uh, I'll be very happy to share with you guys the emails. Tapi kalau misalnya kalian nggak mau kayak ngerasa ribet dengan apa um, protokolnya kalian boleh banget langsung datang ke sini karena um, jamnya juga lumayan menarik ya karena kita di sini buka setiap hari dan kalau di center lain jam segini of course sudah tutup kita actually we're still here right I'm here talking to you guys about how to write uh, a good resume or essay right jadi emang di sini di Amerika agak sedikit unik dari jamnya karena kita mulai dari jam 1 siang sampai jam 9 malam um, not the usual office hour we may say dan kita uh, setiap hari juga available di sini. Jadi ada um, ada dua advisors basically standing by for you guys. All right, so service kita uh, we provide you with five steps. Jadi kita mulai dari sub, uh, step pertama. Jadi kalian baru planning banget nih tadi ke US tapi belum tahu mulai dari mana. Um, let's sit down and have a chat um, about some of your options to study in the US, right? Kemudian, step kedua adalah how are you going to find uh, fund your study? Is it going to be full scholarship, partial scholarship, 
uh, mungkin kalian dapat scholarship dari uh, your employer atau uh, mungkin uh, scholarshipnya juga full scholarship dari government atau yang dari kampus, right? So there are so many scholarship available out there. Um, and then of course completing your application, which is what we're part of what we're going to talk tonight, right? Because I'm I'm definitely I'm going to be here for you guys to check your resume if you already have it. Um, so completing your application itu juga lumayan luas. So it's not only, uh, of course it's not only about the resume, but everything that you can think of basically. Um, take a look at your um, essay. Um, misalnya kalian kayak jari itu apa sih? SAT apa? TOEFL apa? Bedanya TOEFL sama IELTS apa? Right? Terus prepa di mana sih? Gitu. Which I actually have some good news about this preparation course, which I'm going to talk about um, um, uh, in the next coming of slide, in the next slides. And then of course, setelah kalian nanti sudah completing your application, you're applying, and then you get accepted, congratulation, right? Moving forward, kita akan membicarakan uh, gimana sih caranya apply student visa. Karena sebenarnya ini tidak sesulit dan tidak seribet yang kita kebanyakan tahu, right? So we are here to guide you on that. And then of course, the last step is prepare for your departure. Jadi kita di sini setahun sekali, ada yang namanya pre-departure orientation or PDO, di mana kita mengumpulkan anak-anak Indonesia yang sudah siap untuk berangkat next term. Um, kita kasih informasi apa, apa saja yang perlu dipersiapkan sebelum berangkat. Um, the first few things that you need to do when you get to the US, um, and then some experience, we invite like alumni, current students, right? Then of course, karena semua events yang ada di AT Amerika ini terbuka untuk umum, jadi walaupun kalian belum berangkat pun, belum punya LOA atau Letter of Acceptance, kalian juga da, pastinya um, boleh banget join di event PDO ini, okay? And so, if this is your first time and then you you like this event and then you want to know more about our upcoming events, feel free to check our upcoming events at bit.do slash edusa events or simply go to educationusa.state.gov website. Dan of course, kalian juga bisa cek di websitenya at America, right? Okay, so there are two advisors here at America. My name is Vina and my colleague Caroline is outside. Um, kita uh, available every day. This is our office hours. Kita mulai dari jam 1 siang sampai jam 9 malam. Um, kalau Saturday, if you're being fancy and waking up early on a Saturday, feel free to come here at 10 because we're already ready for you guys also. Dari jam 10 sampai jam 9 malam. Alright, jadi gampangnya ingat aja at Amerika tuh selalu buka sampai jam 9. Right? It's just that we're not available in the morning for some other days except for Saturday. Okay? Okay, we also like to introduce you um, our amazing program called Education US Indonesia Targeted Advising Group. Um, we start with Indonesia uh, Education USA Indonesia mentorship program in 2015, but this year we change it into Education USA Indonesia targeted advising group. Basically, it's a platform where you are going to work closely with me as one of you, as one of the advisors, and then nanti aku akan coba connect kamu dengan either an alumni or current students with the same program. Kalau misalnya emang available with the same program yang kalian mau um, apa tuju, right? And this is like a great program also because you're not only going to get gain some assistance from me, but you're going to actually get some help from from um, apa the students themselves or the alumni who knows definitely more, right, about the specific program. So basically, intinya goalnya adalah to um, help you with this successful application. It is pretty similar to if you just want to do the one-on-one -on -one advising um, session with one of our advisors. It's just that with this program, um, kita akan lebih intensive, right? It's more intensive. Um, kita ada lebih dari 400 alumni database on our list. Dimana kalau mungkin kalau aku kita hanya advising one on one biasa, I may not connect you with some of them, right? But with this program, please use this 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 um, apa service because um, look, we we have like many many alumni database and it's, it it keeps counting, it keeps growing, right? So who are we looking for? Basically some targeted groups. So for example, like those who are under the USG funded scholarship such as Fulbright or Indonesian um, government funded scholarship um, such as LPDP or Mora or, or many more, right? Um, but then of course, uh, kita juga expand ke, ke, ke lebih banyak grup lagi. Is it, uh, it, it can be like private sector scholarship or even like self-funded students. So basically it's for everybody, right? But we, we would like to put you into a group if possible. If you're interested to know more, um, I'd be happy to take some questions from you guys, or we can talk um, after the event, or simply go to this um, form link, bit.do slash edusa indo tag, or email at america at educationusa.or.id. 
Okay, and um, last week ada yang datang ke event event International Education Week kita nggak? Thank you for coming. Um, so it's part of the International um, Education Week di mana kayak kita celebrate international education dan basically aku mau expand juga nggak hanya last week but this week and next week actually. Jadi kayak three weeks in a row kita banyak banget event berlangsung uh, event education USA di at America, right? So for example like tonight I'm gonna start with um, talking to you guys about resume, about letter of recommendation. Tomorrow we're going to have the, um, the our new program called US Essay Clinic. If you've been to one of our US Essay Clinic um, sessions, um, probably you realize that we actually before we had it in on Saturdays. Jadi memang biasanya aku bikinnya di uh, Sabtu pagi, right? Di classroom. Jadi itu kayak apa um, smaller area. But because I realized that um, this is like the month where uh, many of you are actually trying to finish your application. Jadi aku kayak bikin beberapa sesi uh, lebih de, de, apa de, enggak hanya di hari Sabtu aja. Jadi aku bikin juga besok di hari Kamis malam jam setengah tujuh. So if you're interested, if you have your draft, your essay draft with you, and then you want to join this event, uh, feel free to do that. Um, Pre-registration is required, so it's not a walk-in base, unfortunately. Dan kita hanya batasin 15 orang aja di classroom di belakang kalau kalian sudah pernah cek classroom area kita. Um, so far sih kita nggak sampai 15 orang. But I like I like it that way. I like it. To, uh, I like to keep it um, tidak terlalu ramai. Jadi kayak kita nanti review essay juga um, lebih um, intensif. So basically, the essay clinic is pretty similar. If you have your essay reviewed by me, uh, it's pretty similar. It's just that we we're doing it together with some other um, um, applicants, right? And that way we can actually learn even more. Um, apa, comparing to some other um, other essay. So if if, if you want to join, please um, you can go to bit.do slash adusa indo essay clinic, or I'll talk more about that um, also later. And then the next day after that, we I'm going to talk about how to apply to US universities. It sounds simple, but uh, mungkin ini akan lebih ngebantu untuk yang mau apply-nya nggak untuk keberangkatan 2019, but probably for 2020. So step one, right? We're talking about step one: research your options. So this is this is the this is what the event is all about. We're going to talk about like apa aja sih sebenarnya kayak mau apply ke US atau mau sekolah ke US tuh apa aja yang perlu di uh, some uh, some stuff that you need to be aware of, right? So I'm going to talk about that on Friday. If you want to come here, bring your friends and 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 your colleagues and and let's ha have a chat about it. Okay, and then of course, nggak sampai di situ aja. Kita ada lagi di hari Sabtunya um, GMAT. Ada yang mau, ada yang perlu ngambil GMAT di sini yang mau lanjut bi bisnis? We got one here. So this is this is our first um, GMAT workshop di at America ever. So we're very proud of this. We're so happy. Uh, udah sesi kedua Sabtu ini. Um, kita kemarin sudah um, last week, last Saturday, the first session. So please use also use um, the service and and apart from GMAT, I would also like to mention to you about our um, uh, we would like to announce this this program that we're going to have in January next year. Um, di sini ada yang mau untuk berangkatan 2020 nggak? Atau kalian semua buat 2019? Pretty much yes. 2020 we got some people here for uh, 2020. Jadi nanti di bulan Januari sampai bulan Mar uh, March kita akan ada um, free GRE preparation course and TOEFL preparation course. Kalau GMAT ini kita hanya adakan empat kali. So clearly if you want to take GMAT this is this is not uh, this is not enough, right? But this is this will help you get a glimpse of what the GMAT task is all about. But what I just mentioned earlier, the the one that we're going to have in January and March, it's a class. Uh, for TOEFL, we're going to have 12 sessions. For GRE, we're going to have 11 sessions during the month of January until March, right? Um, we're going to have more details about that in the next coming of weeks. But the registration is already open um, just a few days ago. Um, and then if you want to know more about it, we will talk, we can talk about that um, after the event, right? So the class will be held here. So for GRE is going to be Wednesday evening, and for TOEFL it's going to be Saturday morning, right? So I think I think timing-wise it's, it's okay for GRE because we expect 
um, those who wants to um, continue masters, right? Jadi kita ekspektasinya emang kalian yang um, baru pulang kerja and then kayak you come here and get the class. And it's, it's all free, like it's all free. Um, for TOEFL, because TOEFL larger audience, right? We're talking about like mau undergrad juga, ada yang mau grad juga. Jadi kalau Saturday, uh, kalau yang TOEFL kita bikinnya di hari Sabtu pagi. So I think it's fine also, like around 10.30, I think it's, it's doable, right? To learn TOEFL, I think it should, it should be fun. So yeah, I'll be happy to take some um, questions about that 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 programs as well. And so, all right. So who's ready to talk about um, how to build a strong CV and resume? All right. So I'm just gonna sit down here. Um, so the presentation is not that uh, many. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, you don't have to take um, some pictures of every slides because I'll be happy to actually share it with you at the end of the session or just email me. You can email me now and just say, hey, Fina, I'm, I'm here on your events and uh, please send me the material. So, nggak perlu kayak ngambil-ngambil foto, but please take some notes if, if you feel like you have, to, uh, you, apa, you need to do that. Okay, so tonight, kita basically ini kita ngomongin um, part of the step three, ya, completing your application. Ini emang lagi masa-masanya banget, um, apalagi untuk yang keberangkatan 2019. Um, yang deadline-nya belum uh, belum biasanya emang mas belum sih kalau bulan November tapi ada yang bulan November udah deadline biasanya coming up December Januari itu yang paling kayak terkenal banget tuh deadline right dan um, kita nggak mau underestimate si resume dan CV ini dan juga letter of recommendation so this is uh, these are also the two things that I got a lot of questions from you guys so that's why I feel like I need to present um, um, specifically on this topic. Okay, so before we start um, apa, uh, talking about the resume itself, kita coba take a look dulu apa sih sebenarnya application requirements untuk S2, right? Specifically for graduate, college transcript, TOEFL or IELTS, letters of recommendation, GRE or GMAT, terkecuali mungkin yang mau ngambil law atau yang berhubungan dengan medical. Uh, fortunately, you don't need to take some GRE or GMAT, walaupun ada beberapa tes juga. Uh, uh, required, but um, resume or CV and of course statement of purpose. This list is actually, I didn't put it um, uh, in order. So, karena apa, kalau kalian sudah uh, beberapa kali um, datang ke Even Education USA, that one word that I like to mention is that ketika the admission committee reviewing your application is holistic. Holistically, they, they're doing it holistically. So, Makanya aku sengaja naruh statement of purpose di bawah. So mungkin some people might think, oh berarti artinya statement of purpose itu gak terlalu penting ya. But it's actually like the opposite. It's quite important or maybe, you know, if not, you know, the I'm not, I don't want to say like it's the most important aspect of your application, but statement of purpose is very, very important, right? But this is just to tell you that kalau di US itu, um, it doesn't mean that college transcript sama TOEFL itu dua hal paling pertama yang sangat penting yang kalian harus kayak ace it. Well, I mean for TOEFL, yes. Um, because clearly, if you want to study in the U.S., you, you definitely need to have, you know, a basic English. So for TOEFL score, you can't really play around with that. So if the university asks you to submit a hundred score for TOEFL IBT, you definitely need to have a hundred. You can't like bargaining um, by having it less than that. But I mean, you know, for for other uh, for others, um, apa kayak misalnya kayak college transcript, a lot of people thought. Oh, my GPA is not that good. It means that I can't go study in the U.S. It's not true at all, right? Because they, they're doing it holistically. It means that they're going to take a look at every single of these documents. So, letter of recommendations juga penting banget. Resume dan um, CV juga penting banget, right? Okay, so apa sih sebenarnya bedanya? What is the difference? Mungkin kalau di sini CV, everybody knows CV, right? Kita kan kalau misalnya kerja or everything, kita selalu pakai CV. But resume mungkin kalau di sini nggak terlalu common, right? Like we don't really use resume here. So what's the difference? What is this CV and resume? So let's start with CV first, the one that you guys pretty much already know. Um, it's curriculum vitae. It means course of life in Latin. And just like what it's called, course of life. It's almost like leader, literal, literal words, course of life. So basically, everything that you've done or you're currently doing, you're going to want to put that on your CV. Everything, all right, everything. Um, over two or more pages, or simply no page, uh, no um, page limit. Jadi nggak ada um, harus berapa halaman untuk CV. You can actually go as many as you want. I know people who showed me their CV with five, six pages, and it's actually fine. 
karena nggak ada peraturan um, apa uh, maksimum berapa, right? Karena itu karena itu it's course of life, so you want to put as many as you want there. Uh, necessary information though, which we're going to take a look. Apa sih sebenarnya yang necessary dari CV? Um, a high level of detail about your achievement, more than just a career biography. Uh, a high level of detail about your achievement. So everything that you've done in the past, you want to go quite, you know, pretty details about it, right? You want to really explain um, for each um, um, experience. Uh, it covers education, it covers teaching and research experience, publications, awards, presentations, honors, additional details such as volunteers, uh, internships, right? Um, any journals that you publish, basically, full history of academic credentials, right? Um, it's static. It doesn't change for different positions. So you can have one CV and it stays like that forever. And then you just need to keep adding things up as time goes on, right? So you have the basic of CV. It stays there for whatever you have already written. You don't change any content that you've, uh, 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 stuff that you've already done. And then you just keep adding stuff as time goes on, right? Like this year, you're doing new things. Oh, this year I'm doing internship here. You put it on your CV. Um, in the next coming of months, you're going to have volunteering in this village in Sumba, for example. You're going to put that on your CV, right? As many as experience as possible. Resume, on the other hand, it means summary. The easier, um, apa, the easy way to, under, uh, to understand about resume, it's the summary of your CV. So the shorter version of your CV is what we call resume. A, it's a concise document, typically not longer than one page. So please keep it to one page. I know it's something new for some people because, huh, resume cuma satu halaman. Kita bisa CV kan dua ya minimum. But for resume, keep it to one page. Yes, you can have two pages, but if possible, um, um, keep it to one page. And, we're, and I'm gonna give you some tips on how to do that in the next coming of in the next uh, few slides. So a summary of experience, education, and skills. Jadi kalau tadi yang si CV aku tadi mention um, is a high level of detail of your achievement. This is a summary of your achievement, right? Jadi kayak jangan terlalu banyak, right? Um, the intended reader will not dwell on resume for very long. So if you have some universities that you're going to apply where they ask you to submit your resume, it means that the admissions, co the admissions committee, they don't want to spend too long take a, uh, uh, apa, uh, looking at your resume. Tapi kalau misalnya mereka mintanya CV, it means that they have some extra time to take a look at it. Because reading like five pages of CV, well, I mean something that they have to read, right? Tapi kalau misalnya mereka mintanya resume, artinya mereka nggak mau kayak lama-lama, right? So probably no more than one minute. So having said that, the goal is to, make, to actually make your, to make you standing out from the competition. In that, in that sense. So it means that you want to put, you know, something that is relevant in your resume, right? That's why it should adapt, you should adapt the resume to every position or purpose the applicants are applying for, right? So for example, on your CV, let's say you are in the engineering um, field, Right, but in CV you have a lot of experience um, di luar engineering. Misalnya kalian melakukan internship atau kalian melakukan volunteering, teaching English in you know some villages in Papua or something like that. Does that have anything to do with you being an engineer? No, right? But you put it anyway on your CV, and then you want to use that for applying for an engineer department in some companies. So for resume, you may not want to put that teaching English volunteer experience on your resume because it doesn't have any anything to do with, with you being an engineer department, right? Jadi kalau resume itu something yang kalian bisa ganti-ganti terus. And it's easier because it's only one page anyway. So you just need to take what you have what you already have on your CV, take some part, put it on your resume. And then you want to use the resume for applying for big volunteer ex, uh, conference, for example. 
And then kamu di CV, oh volunteer experience aku udah banyak banget nih. Yang padahal misalnya nggak ada hubungan dengan engineer. You want to, you know, adapt that resume to have that kind of volunteering experience instead of putting you um, uh, apa experience in the engineering field, right? Karena ini kita mau pakainya untuk di volunteer conference or something like that. Di mana mereka nge-require um, um, resume or something like that. So uh, a resume is something that you can keep changing uh, the content, okay? So dari dua slide sebelum ini, dari dua slide ini tentang CCV dan resume ini, we can conclude that there are three major differences between CV and resumes: the length, the purpose, and the layout. Right? So the length CV is long because it can go more than two pages. Resume is short. For the purpose, CV covers entire career, no matter what. For resume, it's adapt to purpose. Depends on what you want to use that resume for. For the layout, it's static. It doesn't change, right? You just keep adding things. Tapi apa yang sudah kamu tulis in the apa sebelumnya, you don't, you don't change anything. Di mana kalau resume highly customizable, right? You can keep customizing it dep on, uh, depending on what you want to use that resume for. Okay. So let's take a look. What's common to both resume and CV? Paling kiri apa? Resume atau CV? Yes. Paling kiri itu resume, kanan CV. Right? So let's take a look here. Karena CV nggak ada uh, minimum, nggak ada maximum pages, you can play around with however you want in putting your um, contact information, right? So here, Joseph actually have so many lines, right? Sedangkan Avery here, because we want to make it into only one page, Avery has to be very careful in making it short, right? And there are so many ways to do it. So Avery here only put one line for the contact, two lines for contact information. Name, of course, and then just necessary information. And then here's the tricky part. Karena kalau alamat di US, emang, biasanya sih emang gak, gak, gak panjang ya. It's just very simple. Here, apa nih? 2468 Maple Road, Traverse City, Missouri, 4968. Tapi kalau di Indonesia, jalan ini, ini, gang ini, RT, RW, kecamatan ini, ini kelurahan, right? So, and then kamu kayak bingung nih nulis, nulis resumenya gimana. Gak perlu, gak perlu kayak kelurahan, kecamatan, gak perlu. Ini aja kan sebenarnya juga kayak they don't really need your address, but I mean because resume, I mean some I know some people that they actually skip the whole address thing because they mau pakai itu buat study ke US yang di mana dia udah tahu sebenarnya US University juga nggak ada yang mau ngirim apain sih gitu kan ke ke, ke alamat di rumah gitu. So ada yang nggak pakai alamat tapi commonnya people actually put address in there, right? So just put kayak alamat rumah jalan apa. Uh, nomor berapa, terus apa, Jakarta, udah, that's it, kayak kode pos sudah selesai. Um, but the necessary information kan apa, bisa nomor telepon dan email, right? I know some people sometimes put um, kayak Skype ID, or even some people put like um, LinkedIn nowadays. Um, but then again, so sebenarnya resume dan CV ini tidak ada kayak hard rules-nya seperti apa, right? Jadi in, in term of the content-nya itself, itself, for the contact information, you can kind of like play around with it, right? Um, so let's see, contact information at the top, that's a must, and I'm pretty sure you, already, you guys already know that. Um, white, light cream or gray paper of good quality, so mungkin jangan paper yang pink because you just want to feel cute or something like that. So keep it to like just, you know, white, it's okay. US letter, um, well, it's, it is the case for Indonesia, karena kita nggak kita ada kayak apa, um, kita alfabet kan ya, so don't, we don't have problem on that. Um, keep it to size 12, professional font. And um, I'm going to show you like the whole um, outlook for CV and resume here. But I mean, if you take a look at the CV on the right, you may apa kayak bingung gitu karena kayak hah CV ku nggak kayak gini. Kenapa? Karena kalau CV di Indonesia itu pakai foto, ya kan? Ada pas fotonya. Terus ada informasi-informasi yang to be honest, like I didn't get a chance to actually um, have like the Indonesian version of CV. Jadi aku waktu karena udah dulu sekolah di US, ketika balik ya aku ke bawahnya CV-nya US kan. Cuma pas udah balik ke Indonesia, nyari kerjaan, terus kayak nge-compare CV with like my friends. I was like, wait, how is it like so different? Am I doing it something wrong here? Ada foto, terus ada informasinya, gendernya apa, female or male, religionnya apa, terus uh, marital status. 
So like if you're if you just recently divorced, you would put divorce on your CV. Like what? What was that? And then kayak hobby. And I'm like, what is this? So then I work at Education USA, so I got to learn about all this, right? So I'm just gonna tell you guys right now, if you want to use the CV in the US, forget about all that. You definitely want to revise your CV to this, the boring one, we may say, right? No photo, no unnecessary information like date of birth, uh, marital status, like hobby, gender, religion. And I'm gonna tell you why. There's a reason behind it. Kenapa? Karena the US, if you put that, it's considered discriminating, right? The US itu, um, they can't, they can't do that. They can't pick uh, someone based on their religion, based on their gender, gender, based on their background, or based on their racial, right? So the shorter version of all this is that they don't care of whether or not you're a girl or a guy. They don't care if you're a Muslim or if you're a Christian or you don't have religion at all. They don't care about your hobby. They don't care whether or not you're still single or divorced or what have you. They just care about this, like, where did you go to school? What experiences did you have, right? So, and it, it will make your life even easier, right? Because you can you can forget about like all that. You don't you don't you don't have to worry about oh harus pas foto dulu nih, making sure that I look good on my CV so the university can accept me because if I look good, they don't care about that. So I can assure you that. So we we just start with like right away with education, right? Uh, dia agak ketutup, but I'm gonna show you a little bit about that. So, kalau kita lihat di sini sama, resume sama CV. After your contact information, you're going to put your education information in there. Nah, kalau di educationnya ini, kalau untuk CV, karena kan kita kalau di sini S2, S1 itu sudah ada yang pakai tesis kan. Kalau di Amerika sih S1 nggak ada tesis sebenarnya. Nah, tapi kalau misalkan ada tesis, biasanya kalian taruh itu juga. Um, nah, itu bisa ditaruh definitely di CV, right? Karena again, nggak ada kayak maximum page limit. So, you can put information about what your thesis is all about. Tapi of course, nggak semuanya ya, kayak just like a summary. Um, sedangkan kalau resume, again, karena kita tidak ada space, so you can kind of like um, apa, skip the um, um, the thesis part and just the information about your education, right? And then after that, persamaannya itu adalah abis dari education, we move on to the experience. And then we're gonna take a look um, um, for this um, part. So, let's see, so yeah. For the experience part, kalau CV, again, kalian bisa kayak sepanjang-panjangnya. Kalian bisa kayak elaborate um, longer about your experience. Um, content is in reverse or chronological order. Jadi kayak yang paling recent dulu. Jadi something yang kalian masih lakukan saat ini, pekerjaannya itu ditaruh di paling atas. Jadi bukan kalian awali dengan apa yang apa yang paling ber, apa pekerjaan pertama kalian. Oke. Okay. Um, no I statements when you exp, um, explaining the experience. Um, so no first person. And then kesamaan yang berikutnya adalah um, you can put references at the end. Okay. So let's take a look for resume. I know a little bit, uh, it looks smaller, but I hope you can see. Um, but then again, I'll be happy to share with you. Nanti kalau kalian sudah ngeliat di rumah, bisa di zoom ya. Um, so US resume. Again, it's tailored to the position. It means that you can keep changing the content depending on what you're going to use the resume for. Um, contact information at the top. Um, this is the same person, every black. Um, dia pakai, jadi dia habis nama ada di contact information dia. It's very simple, nggak ada kayak lines or anything like that. Um, assuming every is a female, right? Uh, dia, she continue with education, right? And then very simple education dia di mana? Dia Michigan State University, um, Bachelor of la la la. Kalau misalnya emang ada kayak concentration in something, misalnya kalian ngambil economic concentrating in, I don't know, international economics or history, economic history or something like that, you, want, you, may, you may want to put there. Um, and GPA, um, you can actually put GPA on your resume. Um, dan aku mau highlight ini kenapa? Karena um, kebanyakan Ketika nanti kalian nulis essay, misalnya kayak yes, I know you have, um, misalnya di sini case-nya GPA kalian bagus. Di sana tuh kalian banyak kan essay yang aku baca, you talk about your GPA on your essay. But it is not really the place or not really the right place to mention about your GPA on your essay. So alternatively, you can talk about your GPA on your CV instead or resume, 
right? Um, jadi kalau misalnya GPA kalian relatively okay, so something like again there's no hard rule um, in this. So maybe like if you have 3.3 probably, or maybe I know some people put 3.2 or 3.1. Um, you can put it in, in, in your resume. Or kalau misalnya kalian cum laude, right? Kalian bisa taruh itu juga. Um, karena banyakkan juga emang kayak, of course, like when you want to apply to university, you want to tell a lot about yourself, right? To the admissions committee. Then writing, putting that on your essay, it just kind of like out of place. Um, uh, I'm not talking about essay tonight, but I mean, Essay is about like you're making a story, you're making a theme, right? Kalau mau ngomongin apa nih di story ini, dan tiba-tiba kayak ngomongin start with like mentioning about your GPA itu kayak agak nggak nyambung. So that's why I like to tell people, you know what? You can put your GPA on your resume or CV. And this is something that a lot of people actually don't know yet. So I'm happy to share with you guys. Um, and then you go with experience, and then you can go wherever, however you want, right? You can do here every actually just put one experience and then she just put every every experience in there professional experience or some people put work experience or you have like some research experience and then you want to divide that into two different things it's also fine right but here the experience you know um every recently has uh is doing an intern at northwest initiative in lansing missouri um, Missouri or Michigan, I need to double check with that. But, um, you know, after that, she talks about the position. The position is the community outreach intern. Kapan? Juni 2015 sampai August 2015. Atau kalau misalnya ini masih ongoing, you can say June 2015 dash present. Pre yeah. Um, um, and then you want to, you know, make a bullet point uh, on what the, the internship is all about. And you want to keep it to one line. Di mana kalau CV nanti kita akan lihat itu kalian bisa nge ngejabarin itu lebih dari dua line, right? And then no I. So you may want to start every word in a passive voice. So recruited, maintained, oversaw, comp compiled, comp comp compelled, conducted, answered, collected. Tapi kalau misalnya ini posisinya masih ongoing, you may change it into active voice. Jadi kalau misalnya si internship yang masih berjalan, you can say recruiting, maintaining, overseeing, right? Um, and then the list is uh, uh, apa? Um, uh, keep it, keep it, keep it like that, right? Additional experience, something that you want the um, the reader knows about it. Um, you can put you can put it there. Here, every put being a nanny from middle school uh, and being a tutor. Um, and then affiliation. If you ha you've been active in in, in in organization, you can also put it there. So so yeah, I mean here Avery has one page. Um, but then again, you can go to two pages. But I like to keep it to one page. And then here again with the margin, you can play around with the margin. Jadi kalau misalnya kayak resume nya nggak um, perlu kayak margin kayak as if you're writing uh, an essay. Tapi kalian bisa kayak agak didempetin, it's fine juga, tapi masih terlihat rapi, right? Nah, untuk CV, um, it's your academic life in full. Again, contact information at the top. You can start um, again with education, um, educational qualification. So if you have like more than one, you can put it there also. Um, you can put research interest, um, academic Academic experience, you can put like work, working experience similar to Avery, but you can um, apa, elaborate even more when you're explaining every position. Uh, let's see what else here. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. It's pretty much the same. So the next next page, you can put like publications. Um, if you've done like some research in the past, if you have some awards or honors, if you are you know a scholarship awardees for for some. Um, uh, apa, uh, institution, from some institution, you can put it there, affiliation, um, specialized skills, and reference. I know for resume, I don't I don't really see many people put references for, for the resume, but if you want to put it and you still have some space, you can do that. But for, for CV, again, because there's no page limit, you can put reference in there as well, okay? So I think here for, what's his name, Joseph? I think she, he he puts like two um, pages of um, CV, okay. So let's take take some summary about like what CV and resume is. So CVs are basically used by individuals 
seeking fellowships, grants, postdoctoral positions, and teaching or research positions in post-secondary institutions or high-level research positions in industry. So basically CV, kalau misalnya kalian yang kayak mau S3, right? Kebanyakan tuh mereka mintanya CV because you know it means that you have a lot of um, research going on or something like that. But of course, it depends on the school, right? Um, graduate school applications typically request a CV, but in general, are looking for a resume that includes any publications and descriptions of research projects. So banyak kampus yang minta sebenarnya konten-kontennya seperti CV, tapi ditar dibikinnya itu dalam format resume because they just don't have a lot of times um, um, uh, apa reading the resume. So again, because resume is something that you know it's highly customizable. This is an example of you customizing the resume um, following what the university is asking for. So what does that mean here? It means that you definitely need to um, really read what the university is actually asking for. Are they asking for resume or are they asking for CV or maybe even like a mix of both, right? So US colleges and universities generally take um, a holistic approach to evaluate applicants. Again, like I, I like to remind you about that. And resume and CVs can be a useful way to represent yourself holistically because it's it, they, you, you kind of like show who you are also, right? Um, you should adapt the resume to every position or purpose the applicants are applying for. Um, but then again, you definitely have to review the application requirements for the department or graduate school. Um, if it's unclear whether, whether they prefer a CV or resume or a combination of both, contact them to ask and it's totally fine. I know one campus for specific department ask about a mix of resume and CV, right? So they don't specifically mention they ask for resume or CV, they want both. Um, and then if I'm not mistaken, that university has like some guidelines on, on what it is that they're looking for inside that document. So you have to follow um, um, the, the requirements. Or they may not even require either one. Aku belum pernah sih dapat kampus di US yang nggak minta dua hal ini, but they, it, it may be the case, right? So you definitely have to um, double check. All right, so that's pretty much it about resume and CV. It's pretty quick, right? Um, so moving on, letters of recommendation. This is equally important. Um, and I put it in, in, in into one event because my resume and CV is, is pretty much like super fast. So I feel like I'm just adding it into like one event. So a letter of recommendation. How important are letters of recommendation, right? And what is what is letters of recommendation to begin with? It is a detailed discussion from the referees or the recommenders of the personal qualities, accomplishments, and experience of you and what make you unique and perfect for the programs to which you've applied. So if you've been to my events about writing an essay, kind of like, Similar, right? When I when I talk about like writing an essay, I like to tell people, no, you have to write something what that makes you unique, that makes you different, um, that makes you stand out from different uh, from 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 um, as an applicant, right? And here, when you when you take a look at the definition of letter of recommendation, it's pretty much the same, only that it's written by someone else, it's not written by you. So where essay is something that is originally from you, you are the author uh, the author of that essay. Letters of recommendation is like an autobiography kind of kind of kind of thing, written by someone else, but talking about you in that letters, right? So usually, kalau untuk as, uh, apa untuk studi di US, mereka mintanya dari dua uh, apa dari dua recommender, um, usually from academic or professional, right? So for academic, um, usually it's the faculty members, um, and for professionals, it's, it it can be administrators or your internship or education or, or you know your supervisors and employers and um, the best letter the best letter writers or the best recommenders are those that know you well and can provide an evaluate evaluation of your ability to perform and succeed at the graduate level so kalau misalnya beliau they don't know you um, and they don't, they don't really want to write it for you, maybe it's time for you to find someone else, right? Um, let's see. Letter of recommendation, it, 
required for almost every graduate school application because this is, is equally important. Um, your transcript, standardized test scores, and admission essay factor in most heavily. Yes, I mean, let's take uh, your transcript. I mean, they, they definitely want to take a look at your transcript. They want to take a look at your GRE score or your GMAT score. They want to take a look at your essay. But letter of recommendation can make a lot of difference. Right? It can be the deciding factor in the admission process. So you do not want to underestimate the letter of recommendation, the importance of these letters, right? But it's always tricky. I found that really it's quite tricky about this letter of recommendation, at least here in Indonesia, and, and, and we'll, we'll talk more about that in the next few slides. So letter of recommendation, ini misalnya jadi kayak something, kalian nih misalnya transkripnya kurang. Misalnya B aja gitu, kayak enggak, enggak, enggak keren-keren banget gitu misalnya GPA-nya. Atau misalnya kayak itu sudah transkrip biasa aja, um, GRE-nya juga, eh, it's, it's an okay, right? So it kind of like showed the admissions committee that um, you're just not like a good task takers, right? But it doesn't mean that you're, they don't want to, they don't want to have you um, apa, in, that, in, their, in their university, karena ternyata di dunia pekerjaan, atau kayak ketika kalian dulu kuliah, your people-to-people -people relationship is really great, right? So this is why it's holistically, it's everything, right? Mungkin kalau misalnya kayak kalian mau apply ke apa, sekolah di negara lain, um, your score is everything, right? Your academic performance is everything. Tapi kalau di US, ini menurut aku bikin US agak unik ya, karena mereka nggak hanya ngelihat dari angka, 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 but everything. Jadi kayak aku tadi bilang, kalau misalnya kayak dari segi angka kalian biasa-biasa aja tapi tapi kalian tuh punya cerita apa uh, there's so much more that than just numbers that, that that you can put on the essay or that the recommenders can put on the letters you're pretty much like good to go also you have a better chance you have a higher chance on in getting accepted in getting accepted right an excellent recommendation letter can make up for weakness in any of the application documents read holistic although it can vary Generally, you will be asked for three letters, but it really depends on on un the university, right? Ada yang minta dua, ada yang minta satu, ada yang minta tiga. Ada yang mereka spesifik minta mau penulisnya tuh dari akademik apa dari um, dari mana? Dari faculty members atau dari akademik atau dari professional. Ada yang mereka minta dua-duanya dari professional. Ada yang minta uh, akademik aja. So it really depends, right? So who should write the letters of recommendation? It has to be someone who knows you well knows your work, know you long enough to write with authority, describe your work positively, kalau misalnya, tapi kalau misalnya mungkin ada some hiccups, um, this person can talk how you overcome that, right? Um, have a high opinion of you, right? So know, know where you're applying, um, know your educational and career goals, be able to favorable compare you with your peers, uh, be well known, right, and be able to write a good letter. So if you feel like the recommenders or the referees um, lack of one of this, with all due respect, I would say let's move on and find someone else, right? Kalau misalnya emang nggak, tapi nggak ada nih, kayak cuma beliau doang tuh misalnya. So we have to do something about it, right? And I'm gonna give you some tips about how to. Um, to do that. But however, this is a problem that I found happening here a lot. You are not supposed to write the letter. Who are supposed to write the letter? Only the recommenders or only the referees. You are not the author for the letters. And I know I'm saying this because, you know, in the past, we actually have a lot of Indonesians would write the recommenders on behalf of the referees. And I'm telling you right now, ethically speaking, it's not correct, it's not right, right? It's not right. If the referees refuse to write it themselves, we may try to, someone, to find someone else who might, but they have to be the one who writes it, okay? If the referees ask you to write it on behalf of them, it doesn't mean you're going to say yes right away. Because again, you are not supposed to write the letter of recommendation, right? If they are not capable in writing it in English, which sometimes the situation is like this, offer your help to find them sworn translators. 
and you are not supposed to be the one who translate it. Right? You are not supposed to translate the letter. The admissions committee take this supposedly confidential letter seriously. If they ever find out that, you know, dari segi nulis essay kalian sama dari segi nulis letter of recommendation itu kalian agak sama, mereka bisa langsung apa mendisqualify kalian. Like without you know, dirunding apa di dibicarakan lah dengan komite yang lain. They can just like simply skip um, all of your application altogether. If they ever found out, they can reject your application right away. Okay? So what can you do now? Kalau misalnya kalian dapat recommenders yang aduh saya sibuk banget, kalian jadi yang tulis. Terus misalnya kayak aduh kamu saya udah lama banget nih, uh, saya udah nggak terlalu ingat uh, apa sama apa project kita dulu or something like that. What can you do now? Well, we have to provide all the necessary information, right? Make them remember you. The referees may not remember everything about you. So these are something that you can provide to them. And maybe mungkin kayak beliau mungkin malah jadi makin kayak, aduh saya gak punya waktu nih untuk kayak begini. So well, it means that they're just not willing to write it for you, right? So it just means that they're not like really fully support you to go to study in the US. So maybe kalau misalkan dapat Um, apa referees yang kayak gitu kalian mungkin bisa approachnya in a different way mungkin kayak di, di apa uh, diceritain dulu kayak sebenarnya kalian ini untuk apa sih ya nih pak atau ya nih bu saya mau lanjut sekolah di US mereka mintanya letter of recommendation seperti ini di mana harus bapak yang nulis atau ibu yang nulis gitu kan uh, and then you can provide you with like refresh their memories kan misalnya kayak saya dulu ngambil kelas uh, I took your accounting class right and then you can provide the transcript Um, atau mungkin ya mungkin dia nggak ingat juga kali ya cuman kan kayak bisa bisa <coughs> bisa kayak mention um, ya yeah, when I took your class I actually got A plus or something like that um, give give them your resume or your or your CV your admission essay also help juga jadi kayak bisa tahu juga sebenarnya kalian ini mau ngapain sih studi ini gitu kan um, courses you've taken with them your research experience and you know the list is uh, keep going on and on internship your award you've won work experience professional goals list of program to which you're applying um, and do that for the application so with having said this all it means it means what right kalau misalkan harus kayak approach the professor uh, apa uh, di mana kalian um, expect beliau untuk kayak nulis di essay it means that you don't do it last minute And that is something that I l that um, often happen here, right? Deadline kul deadline kuliahnya, eh deadline applynya kayak let's say bulan Januari 15. Sekarang kalian baru approach um, recommendersnya. Itu kayak menurut aku kayak udah agak lumayan mepet banget. So if we, if if it's possible, do it as early as possible. If you're still applying for the 2020, for example, you can start. You know, just make make some introduction from now, right? Kayak, Pak Bu, saya actually planning nih untuk tahun depan apply gini-gini, bersedia nggak? At least kayak dikumpulin nih kira-kira siapa aja sih yang tertarik untuk nulis, gitu, oke? Okay? So, let's take a look at sample of the letter of recommendation. Um, this is juga mungkin jadi something yang kalian bisa share juga ke referisnya. Kalau misalnya, aduh saya nggak tahu nih cara nulisnya seperti apa. Kalian bisa bilang kayak, um, kalau di US seperti ini uh, layoutnya. I actually take this from I believe oh yeah I have to put the the link but I got it from UC Berkeley um, which is something that you can google it um, they put it on their website so I'm just gonna I just I just actually took it from their website so you know you start with kalau misalnya ini akademik uh, university letterhead atau kalau misalnya dari company you want to put the company um, letterhead in there and then you know like some information the sender's name department departmental address phone number fax email address, probably yang paling penting itu nomor telepon sama email ya, just in case the university wants to, co to contact them. Um, today's, to today's date, recipient's name, um, and you start with dear or to whom it may concern. Um, so if you take a look at, you know, um, the overall look of the letter of recommendation, it's kind of like almost like essay, but actually I want to keep it one page. Right. Ini kan agak jadi satu setengah page karena agak kepanjangan di informasi di paling atas kan informasi si penulis sama, sama universal letterhead. But I mean if you take a look at um, the content itself, it's pretty much like you know like a page is enough, right? So let's take a look for um, uh, each paragraph. So you start, it can be something personal. So it's like writing an essay juga. So bisa mulai nanti si recommender itu memulai dengan kayak who you are, just very briefly. Um, kenal di mana, right? Atau misalnya kalau misalnya kayak tadi um, beliau misalnya um, 
karena kan ini harus something harus harus yang ditulis oleh si referees right and then si referees misalnya kurang jago nih bahasa Inggrisnya tapi beliau tetap bisa aja sih nulis bahasa Inggris mungkin bisa dijelasin di sini the thing is just to be honest and to be you know just 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 tell us it is right kalau misalnya emang kayak beliau bilang kayak uh, ini nggak bakal jadi Uh, letter yang bahasa Inggrisnya keren banget bisa dibilang kalau uh, apa uh, uh, you know my English is not you know very good in writing this letter but I'll be happy to apa provide more information about you about you the applicants um, jadi kayak di sini dia mulai dengan kayak si penulisnya ini um, dulu ngajar dia dia PhD uh, apa tahun kelima dia kenal dengan si Jane Doe ini dari di kelas Um, Philosophy 111 diajari oleh Profesor uh, John Smith. Um, kemudian dia uh, basically di sini ngomongin dua di, par, di page ini dia ngomongin dua hal bahwa si Jane ini um, highly intelligent and has good analytical skills. But instead of just saying that as a fact, dia elaborate. Maksudnya apa? Kenapa dia punya good analytical skills? Kasih contoh, right? Terus yang kedua dia ngomongin kalau Jane ini punya excellent communication skills. And then dia um, elaborate uh, communication skill seperti apa terus dibahas lah mungkin salah satu contoh kalau misalnya kalian uh, apa recommender saya mau ngomongin juga kalian punya communication skills mungkin contohnya adalah iya karena kamu dulu pernah ikut program apa yang dimana kalian kayak um, apa ngelid suatu ada lagi ada masalah tapi kalian nge- pokoknya kayak have just uh, elaborate right you just have to elaborate. And then you can go to a personal level, right? At the personal level, Jane is a well-disciplined, industrious student with a pleasant personality. Um, just very brief talking about that. And then you kind of like continue working, uh, endorsing Jane, right? Um, the the recommender. Di mana kalau misalnya um, Jane ini akan jadi salah satu kandidat yang oke okay banget buat di kampus. Ini 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 departemen ini ini ini. Makanya kayak nanti si recommendernya harus punya informasi yang lumayan jelas juga, right? Um, and then of course leave your yeah it can be of any for if, if I can be of, uh, of any for this, uh, assistance or provide you with any further information please do not hesitate to contact me and that's it right pretty much pretty much it so it doesn't have to be this long it can be shorter than that if if the referees want but this is like the Id- like like the um, the overall look of what the letter of recommendation um, sh- uh, supposed to look like okay And of course, don't forget to send you uh, to send him or her a, a thank you note and keep him or her in the loop. Kalau misalnya kabarnya gimana, keterima enggak or something like that. So just you know, very um, uh, appreciative of their time writing it. All right. So I think I believe that is my last slide. Good luck, and I will take some questions. All right, ada yang mau bertanya? I'm pretty sure. I hope you have some questions. Uh, ditunggu dulu nanti uh, mic-nya. Saya mau nanya. Iya, mbaknya dulu yang di sini ya. Uh, terima kasih, uh, Mbak Vina. Saya, uh, nama saya Luki. Uh, saya sekarang uh, kerja. Uh, Uh, insya Allah pengen lanjutin itu di tahun 2020. Pertanyaan saya untuk recommendation letter itu untuk scholarship sama untuk uh, requirement ke kampus itu perbedaannya di mana ya? Apakah sama? Kalau ini kan tadi uh, tentang subjeknya kan uh, dia dulu uh, student saya dia seperti ini seperti ini. Nah tapi kalau untuk uh, scholarship bedanya apa uh, letter of recommendationnya? Uh, ini scholarship buat apa ya? buat S2. Uh, maksudnya scholarship-nya nih dari uh, lembaga apa kalau oh. kamu udah tahu? Uh, misalkan kayak Fulbright atau Mereka minta ya recommendation ya? Yeah, yeah. Oke. Okay. Oh, that's a good that's a good thing. Um, uh, I wasn't aware of that, but um, that is a really good question actually because I don't know the letter of recommendation. Kalau aku sih lebih ngelihatnya kayak letter of recommendation untuk scholarship itu lebih kayak pretty similar to kayak kerjaan kali ya. Lebih kayak, do you recommend this person to, uh, apa, what do you think about this person? Masa lebih kayak, do you think she or he is qualified to be in this scholarship? Sedangkan kalau aku ngelihatnya kalau untuk kayak universitas, lebih kayak on a broader context. But I think kalau misalnya memang, 
Hmm, kalau aku ngerasa kalau misalnya emang recommendersnya kebetulan sama daripada kita bilang kita minta ke beliau untuk kayak nulis hal yang berbeda, I'm pretty sure like it's not pretty convenient, right? So I think in the sense, even though at the end of the day you have the recommendation letter seperti yang apa si contoh ini untuk ke universitas, I think untuk kayak univ- untuk scholarshipnya pun nggak ada salahnya sih kalau memang mau sama. Mm-hmm. But that's actually good thing though. Like I I I have never I have so far aku belum pernah review letter of recommendation yang untuk scholarship. But I mean, you know, if the professor or or, or he or she wants to go with this style is is fine, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lanjutkan pertanyaan yang tadi. Misalkan uh, kita kan uh, apply di beberapa kampus nih. Nah, itu uh, letter of recommendation-nya itu sama atau gimana karena kan kasihan juga kan That, that's, uh, a, that's a good question si so sebenarnya ini kayak um, letter of recommendation ini sebenarnya tuh hampir mirip banget sih sama essay right It's, it it talks about you what makes you unique hanya bedanya kalau essay itu ditulis oleh kamu kalau letter of recommendation ditulis oleh si recommender kan kalau misalnya kayak essay aku biasanya juga selalu bilang kalau misalnya kalian mau apply ke lima sekolah aku sih selalu bilang ada beberapa orang yang kayak datang ke kaku terus kayak bawa lima essay aku bilang ngapain nulis lima lima essay gini kecuali kalau memang tiap universitas pertanyaannya punya spesifik yang memang beda banget gitu. Kalau aku selalu nyaranin make one good foundation essay and then just change some part uh, depending on what you want to use that um, apa essay-nya mau dikirim kemana, right? Ini juga ini juga kalau misalnya programnya semua sama, ada beberapa orang yang kayak oh kalau kampus ini aku programnya ini, kampus ini programnya ini agak beda, berarti itu obviously essay-nya pasti beda dong. Tapi kalau misalnya kayak asumsinya di sini kalian mau apply ke de- uh, basic ke departemen yang sama, program yang sama hanya beda kampus aja, kalau dari essay kan paling yang kita ganti itu adalah di paragraph di mana kita ngomongin soal si kampus itu kan. Nah, kalau di sini sih basic-nya sama juga, kayak dari awal sih basically di sini paragraf 3 ini something that you can keep it as is and then mungkin di di paling palingan di bagian bawah. Right, di balik di bagian bawah di mana kayak um, ya yeah, Jendo is uh, definitely going to be a great fit for University of da 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 da. Gitu. Jadi hampir sama sih hanya di beda di ini aja. Karena pastinya kan kita juga nggak mau ngeganggu si recommender untuk nulis 5 ratas yang berbeda ya. So ya. Yeah. Alright. Uh, tadi depan ya. Ya. Yeah. Nanti boleh oper ke sebelah. Oke, okay, jadi saya pertanyaannya tentang letter of recommendation dan hubungannya dengan essay. Jadi di essay kan kita menulis suatu story cerita yang membuat kita yang unik lah, yang menjelaskan satu masalah yang mau kita solve dengan kuliah ke luar negeri ke QS. Nah di letter of recommendation itu apakah bagusnya um, kita meminta si recommender itu buat mensupport cerita kita atau dia cuma nulis kayak general things yang benar-benar bagus kayak oh ini anaknya rajin dia selama kuliah pinter gitu atau dia benar ya yeah, no that is a really good question kalau misalnya memang si recommendernya ini kebetulan salah satu recommender yang kamu dulu pernah project bareng yang itu ternyata ceritanya ada di essay kamu nih boleh banget boleh banget ditaruh atau misalnya kalau misalnya kamu um, si recommendernya ini pernah project bareng dengan kamu di mana mungkin kamu kayak asisten asisten dosen misalnya gitu ya. Kamu ada kayak kesulitan menghadapi suatu hal, tapi si si, si recommender ini ngelihat kayak di mana kamu bisa belajar uh, apa di, di di situasi tersebut kamu bisa mengubah itu jadi suatu hal yang kayak jadi positif gitu ya, jadi kayak bener lagi gitu. Itu bisa ditaruh di di sini di letter of recommendation. Atau kalau misalnya mau hanya kayak general dalam artian kayak hanya pengen bilang kalau kamu orangnya you know has good analytical skills atau misalnya kamu punya have good communication skills is is also okay. So again sebenarnya there is no like hard rules um, in in how to write um, the the letter of recommendation cuman definitely boleh banget gitu. Alright. Ya yeah, yang di ya yeah, boleh oper juga. Uh, mau nanya like does can we put like the CV, can we put the C, apa CV-nya itu boleh enggak kayak if we put any kind of design like from any kind of Photoshop gitu. Jadi like misalnya kayak waktu kita kita interested dalam jurusan ini jadi kita misalnya animasi lah. Let's say kita ambil interested in animasi gitu. Boleh enggak kayak di CV itu desain pakai taruh gambar-gambar animasi gitu. And then the hmm. second question kan tadi that you say that the CV Gak boleh naro I, I, saya gitu di depannya. 
uh, how about if we put like uh, the background we put like we say a guy who is interested or a guy who likes kayak gitu-gitu boleh enggak Okay, so maybe not because it makes it kind of like jadi kayak mm, not 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 formal in a way, right? But I mean here, kalau misalnya kayak if you're like in the art department or art background, um, I think it depends on the university, right? So if you're applying to an art school in the US, I believe you can be as creative as possible in making the CV. Right, so maybe untuk CV, mungkin maksud kamu tadi lebih ke portfolio kali ya. Yeah. Yeah. Itu berarti is two separate, uh, two separate things. Um, there are some art schools that don't ask for your CV because kalau untuk kayak art school kan mereka lebih kayak pengen ngelihat kayak your portfolio. Atau mungkin kalau misalnya emang mereka jarang sih aku dapat kampus yang mereka minta kayak CV or maybe like resume, but it's, it's very rare to happen that way. Biasanya sih lebih ke, ke portfolio, dimana kayak nanti mungkin di portfolionya you can be as creative as possible, right? You can put like your basically your experience in there, but yeah, it really depends on the on the campus. Here, I'm talking here ini uh, resume dan CV-nya lebih yang kayak untuk um, other majors. Jadi memang kalau misalnya kayak untuk art Um, apa um, fine arts and all that agak I'm pretty sure it's something yang bisa di customize banget depends on the university yeah and my next question mm-hmm. tadi kayak uh, right in the CV no putting word I in front but is it okay like we put a guy who is interested or a guy Uh, yeah, like again, kalau misalnya ben- kalau misalnya layout CV-nya seperti layout CV di sini sih, I would not recommend to put that. Um, you want to keep it like as is yang aku, aku udah mention. Cuma kalau misalnya emang ini um, a CV for like art schools where you can be very creative in there, I don't see why not. Mm-hmm. It really depends on the university. Mm-hmm. All right. Any other question? Ya, yeah, yang di belakang. Terima kasih atas kesempatannya. Nama saya Niken. Uh, tadi Mbak sudah menjelaskan bahwa kalau menulis letter of recommendation, uh, kita harus cari orang yang benar-benar tahu kita. Dan di sisi lain, uh, semakin tinggi orang jabatan orang yang nulis itu, semakin bagus dan semakin meyakinkan. Tapi banyak kasus di mana orang yang tahu benar kita itu uh, jabatannya mungkin di bawah direktur. Kan saya kerja di uh, kementerian. Jadi level kasubdit gitu di bawah direktur yang lebih sering uh, bekerja sama saya yang tahu mm-hmm. banget saya atau bahkan mungkin senior mm-hmm. yang tidak punya jabatan struktural mm-hmm. apakah hal itu seberapa ngaruh sih ya yeah. ah ya yeah, terima kasih yeah. thank you for the question It's a really good question um, aku juga mau koreksi mau koreksi dulu basically sebenarnya sih untuk letter of recommendation ini kalau di sini sih aku nggak tahu ya kalau di sini tuh di Indonesia kalau kalian mau kerja of of course lah ya pakai letter of recommendation kan ya Right. Mungkin kalau di aku enggak tahu deh. Kalau di sini aku mungkin ngelihatnya orang lebih kayak semakin tinggi jabatan semakin baik. Di sini untuk uh, di di case untuk di US is actually not. Right? Jabatan itu mereka enggak ngelihat jabatan. Dan ini sebenarnya banyak pertanyaan salah basic sih kayak the million uh, the a million dollar question that I got from from a lot of you. Posisi si recommendernya harus tinggi enggak sih? Kalau aku sih simple aja kayak gini kayak case-nya gini. Um, karena again, kenapa di sini letter of recommendation kalau kalian baca it's quite personal in a way, right? Gak terlalu yang kayak kaku banget gitu loh. Kenapa? Karena ya ini kayak ini hampir mirip sama kayak personal essay, kayak hampir mirip kayak statement of purpose. This is a way for the admissions committee to know you even better from someone else's perspective. So obviously they're looking for someone who knows you better. So here mereka gak nanya jabatannya apa. Jadi aku misalnya kayak uh, contohnya kalian sempat ketemu dengan presiden Indonesia Pak Jokowi mungkin hanya baru sekali gitu kan terus beliau kebetulan mungkin bersedia nih untuk nulis letter recommendation tapi baru sekali doang cuma kayak jabatan jabatangan ta, apa jabatangan doang gitu um, dimana mungkin kayak nanti isi letter letter recommendationnya kayak basic aja dimana beliau mungkin hanya akan bilang kalau Um, yeah, you're good. You're good fit for this university. But actually, beliau tidak tahu kamu um, luar dalam. Dibanding sama di kantornya ada nih yang biasa-biasa aja, yang kayak supervisor aja sih posisinya gitu. But like you've been working with this person for so long, like dia tahu banget kamu tuh karakternya seperti apa, yang mana. Kalau misalnya untuk dari kalau misalnya kita ngeliat kalau ini mendingan 
Presiden of Indonesia versus just some um, apa uh, 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 what do you call it the term kayak just some managerial level di, di di kantor mendingan yang mana mungkin orang kita dari kamu lebih, lebih mikirnya pasti yang presiden lah pasti universitas kaget dong bahasa ada presiden Indonesia nulis letter of apa letter recommendation buat saya but actually not the university doesn't care who writes it they care about like how well this person actually knows you so the short answer for your question is definitely go with someone who knows you well walaupun peringkatnya um, di bawah dari presiden of whatever gitu all right i hope it helps mm -hmm. ada lagi pertanyaan yes yang di depan kalau bikin cv itu kan background sama biografi di bisa lihat kalau ilmu pengetahuan yang kita tahu histori bisa nggak kayak sejarahnya kayak gitu sejarah atau apa sejarahnya Inggris atau sejarahnya apa gitu Why do you wanna put sejarah Inggris di your CV? Uh, atau ilmu pengetahuan sains apa di Filipi mungkin itu termasuk portfolio ya? Yeah, no, you don't you don't put that on your CV. So CV is basically what you are, you know, like your working experience. Uh, where did you get your um, edu your uh, your? Uh, example, I have to uh, accounting staff and recom medis staff. Uh, tu kalau jadi kalau so I know to but uh, see sorry sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. Itu if to learning uh, apa jurusan oh, itu ya to making uh, apa hubungan internasional mayoring mayoring relationship internasional ya yeah, no you don't put that on your cv so uh, we can talk more about that um, after this if you if you want but um, cv is basically you know your 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 um, past experience mm -hmm. or your current experience uh, uh, so it's experience is indonesia if uh, apa uh fresh fresh graduated how about fresh graduated uh, can to apply itu apa maksudnya uh, baru tamat baru tamat S1 atau S2 tapi belum pernah pengalaman kerja apakah boleh bisa bisa berarti tapi berarti nanti di experience kita enggak naruh apa-apa so it is it is always good if you have like some work uh, or work volunteer or internship experience on your CV oh bisa juga ya yeah. tapi apa enggak perlu lo mesti kerja di Indonesia dulu baru Uh, yeah. karena jadi kalau orang yang pertama kali uh, belum peng di Indonesia boleh bisa ke sana mm -hmm. untuk mm -hmm. oh bisa juga ya ya yeah. oh ya yeah, yeah. alright so I'm gonna take maybe one last question ya yeah. uh, mungkin uh, sedikit aja mau tanya seberapa jauh sih uh, Universitas US itu uh, care sama otentikasi dari uh, apa namanya letter, letter of recommendation ya yeah, letter of recommendation I mean like apakah mereka ngelihat tanda tangannya atau apa mereka ngelihat Lihat apanya sorry uh, tanda tangannya oh. signaturenya atau apakah mereka benar-benar menganalisis sampai uh, personality dari si recommender iya uh, yeah, saking karena mereka pengen ngelihat kalau uh, ini ini benar-benar bukan plagiarism gitu mm -hmm. uh, dan well, apakah I mean, Ya, satu lagi, sorry. Ya, yeah, um, okay. Apakah semakin banyak letter of recommendation means itu better gitu okay. uh, untuk kita bisa chance masuk ke universitas? Uh -huh. Oke. Okay. Um, so pertanyaan yang pertama dulu itu bagus sih. Basically, um, here's the thing though, like I mean, we're talking about like ethical aja sih. Kalau di US itu they very value about you being honest, right? Um, of course mereka nggak ada kayak waktu mungkin untuk kayak bener-bener ngecekin banget, ngedouble checkin siapa sih yang nulis gitu loh. But I mean kalau misalnya segelintir aja mereka kayak kan mereka nanti pas misalnya oke okay, ada ada aplikan nih dari kamu, nama kamu nama siapa? Siapa? Atea. Ya, kita kayak Atea nanti uh, apply nih kan. Nanti semua dokumen Atea tuh ada di depan mereka nih semuanya, esai apa segala macam. Mereka baca esainya Atea dulu nih, baca esai. Oke, okay, huh, menarik. Oke. Okay. Dia baca essay, dia baca letter recommendation. Pas baca letter recommendation, hmm, kok cara penulisannya agak mirip ya? You know what I mean? Dan mereka kayak, kayak nangkep banget nih kalau 
did you write this? Maksudnya kayak did you write this essay? Kalau misalnya kayak sampai mereka nang, nang, merasa their personal judgment aja uh, tahu kalau misalnya Thea sebenarnya nulis surat recommendation, mereka bisa langsung kayak itu berarti udah plagiarism, right? Bukan plagiarism juga sih udah kayak uh, berbohong ibaratnya, right? So ethically speaking uh, itu udah udah nggak benar. Jadi itu mereka bisa banget kayak langsung mereka um, disqualified your 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 status. But I mean in terms of like um, how well they're going to like really check. Uh, I mean, that thing depends. Misal ada beberapa departemen yang kayak mereka hanya nerima, mungkin yang 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 apply nggak terlalu banyak. Um, terus um, they actually do that some extra time untuk kayak double check to the recommender, right? Mungkin kayak bisa dia mereka langsung nelfon atau mereka masang kirim email kayak we just want to know who actually write this essay, uh, this letter of recommendation. Surat ke recommender sama mungkin kayak agak sempat kaget yang kayak oh yeah, I actually ask um, Thea untuk nulis ini gitu. They can actually just disqualify that. Because apalagi kalau misalnya surat letter of recommendation itu ternyata um, surat yang you are not supposed to read it, gitu, right? So um, I know I know it's problematic in a way because kayak many many times I got a lot of advices coming here and they said, but beliau benar-benar nggak bisa banget mbak nulis kayak beliau tuh sibuknya sibuk banget. In this case, I'm not here to tell you, um, no, you have to find someone else, or not. I don't want to help you, right? No. I'm gonna give you your personal judgment on that, right? But the case is like that. Once the university, if they ever find out, they may actually disqualify you. If I ever do, have I ever know someone um, apa in that situation? No, I don't know. But um, again, like it's, it's something that is possible to happen, right? So mungkin kalau misalnya kita bicara dari jauh-jauh hari dulu, um, atau misalnya kayak um, bisa minta ke beliau untuk nggak uh, apa-apa, coba aja mungkin dulu ditulis di dalam bahasa Indonesia, bu, gitu. Misal kalau saya beliau tidak bisa nulis, tapi nanti nanti saya bisa bantuin ke sworn translator. But then in a way, at the same time, you're not supposed to read that letter, right? So you just have to know, you just being you just being ethical. You just like, okay, ditaruh di amplop, kamu langsung pergi ke sworn translator and have that letter translated. Atau mungkin nanti kalian bisa menyertakan, you know, like a memo or like a note. Ketika nanti kamu submit itu ke universitas, kalau misalnya emang you can be the one who submit it. Karena kan sometimes ada beberapa universitas yang um, harus si recommendernya kan yang ngirim kan. Atau mungkin nanti si recommendernya bisa bilang. Atau misalnya kalau misalnya, aduh bahasa saya jelek banget. You can explain that. Actually it's, it's, it's okay kok, nanti jelasin aja bu atau pak di recommender, apa di suratnya kalau emang bahasa Inggrisnya kurang. They will understand that. Especially the fact that we are an international applicant, the recommender, we're not using English as the first language. So the university will understand. All right. So the next question is about the more le, uh, the more letter of recommendation is it going to be better? No. So you definitely have to follow how many letters the university is asking for. Kalau misalnya mereka karena itu gatannya jelas kok. Right? Kalau misalnya mereka bilang submit a letter of recommendation, it means only one, right? Misalnya mereka enggak mention nih harus profesor atau dari uh, kantor. You can pick one. It's easier. Tapi kalau misalnya mereka bilang kayak submit three letter of recommendation, don't submit five. It means you don't read the guidelines. Dan itu malah akan mengurangi kayak jadi malah universal malah, malah kesel. Ih bilangnya cuma tiga, kenapa saya minta lima gitu kan. Jadi kayak mereka jadi kayak jadi adding more work to the admissions committee. So just it doesn't mean that more letters uh, the better. Right? Okay. 8:32, two minutes late, but um, thank you guys so much for coming. I'll be around um, uh, for a while if you have some extra questions. Um, and then again, I'll be happy to answer some question about yang buat kalian yang mau belajar untuk 2020. We got TOEFL and we got JRE. Mungkin kalau yang buat study untuk 2019, um, you don't have um, uh, time left karena programnya sampai Maret dan asumsinya you're not gonna take the the task like right away, right? So this is definitely great for you guys yang di 2020. Tapi kalau misalnya memang ada yang menyoba juga di 2019, let's have a chat about it. Let's talk about like some of your deadlines. Kalau misalnya memang ada, oh deadline aku masih kayak bulan. April kok, so let's talk about let's talk about that. All right, thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. Really appreciate your time. I really hope this presentation um, helpful. Um, happy to share with you guys. Again, thank you, and I'll give you back to Ed America. All right, thank you, Vina. Okay, as our transition here in Ed America, I would like to invite you to take a photo with our logo. And thank you all for coming to Ed America. I hope to see you all in the next Ed America's event. Bye bye.